The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks so much for kicking off your trading day right here at TFNN. And we got CPI this morning, and the headline is higher than expected. We get a number, 3.4% for an annual rate. Now, we're going to talk about some of the comps this was going against when you talk about December of last year. We've been talking about it this week. But nonetheless, on a monthly basis, 0.3%. That is a little hot. You multiply that times 12, you're looking at 3.6%, right? Discount everything else. In the last 30 days, consumer prices up 0.3%. Now, housing is a big part of that. Housing, a huge component of the CPI. So not too surprising that housing is going to have an outsized impact, especially with what's going on right now. Um, but nonetheless, it's a hot number. We get a little bit of a reverberation in markets, and we kick things off with the chart of the 10-year. There's your acceleration from to lower price and higher yield. We got the 10-year back above 4.06%, just above 4.06 right now. Seems like the expectation is that March, going to be a little bit difficult to get that first cut in March, might be pushing things back to potentially May June, something like that. As we get higher yield, we got a little bit of stickiness in inflation. We got a little bit of a hot number, and we got yields rising. We got markets pulling back, uh, but we got 23 minutes to go until the opening bell. And all things considered, folks, the market's only back to where we were at about 3:45 yesterday afternoon, right? So we trade higher in the overnight session. We were up to as high as 48.38. You see the acceleration at 8:30. The market made it up to 48.35. We give up some of those gains. Still pretty respectable with the S&P trading at 48.14. Going to be remarkable if we get this type of a hot number in the CPI and this market just shakes it off and runs with it. We've seen it happen before. Jobs Friday, right? Market, first move was down. The, the day ended on the NASDAQ 100, a solid 250 points off of the lows. We'll see if we can do it again today. A uh, hot number, but we had talked about this is going to be, now here's what's difficult here, right? We talked about the yearly comps were going to be a tough one. And let's get into the headlines. Why not? You kick things off, inflation picked up in December. Overall, we're at 3.4%. On the core side, which is in the pink here, we're at 3.9%. You look over to CNBC, 0.3% in December, higher than expected. You're talking about uh, a yearly rate of 3.4%. Now, the market was looking for about 0.2% on a monthly basis, okay? And they were looking for about 3.2% on the yearly basis. Now, we had been talking about that the yearly basis was going to be a little bit difficult for this one because last December, and I'm talking about last last, as in this December was 2023 that we just got. If you compare that to December of 2022, you actually had a dip in consumer prices followed by an acceleration in the, the next uh, three months or so. January, February, even March, in the beginning of 2023, we saw some rapid increases in CPI. I think one month was 0.4% on a monthly basis, one month was 0.5%. So what you do is you take that, okay, on a yearly basis, and you go forward, well, when we get CPI for January next month, right, it's gonna be comping out against a number on a yearly basis that's almost a half percentage point higher. It's going to happen again in February. So the yearly comps are going to be helped out. Keep that in mind, man. The monthly one here, though, and I can't wait to talk to our man Kevin Hinks. We talked to him after the first break because Kevin always says, folks, it's a great way to remember it, right? We know 11 out of the 12 months that go into that yearly number. The only number we're getting is the last 30 days. Then you add it up to the 11 months, you get the 3.4%. But boy, pay attention to that monthly number, man. 0.3% on a monthly basis. You exclude the food and energy, and you have core CPI going up again, 0.3% on a monthly basis, and 3.9% from a year ago. Folks, that is not out of the woods, okay? Core, focusing on core CPI, 0.3% for the month, 3.9% from a year ago. You could make the case, well, hey, man, you know, things aren't that bad right now. We're catching a lot of those numbers on 
the yearly going back to when we had accelerations that have calmed down a bit. But you just multiply the monthly, the monthly number times 12, folks, and you're at 3.6 percent. Yeah. Now, shelter, like we talked about, okay, up 0.5 percent for the month. That is accounting for more than half of the core CPI increase. On an annual basis, shelter costs increase 6.2 percent, or about two-thirds of the rise in inflation is what they're putting over there. And there's your month over month, and that's why things are a little bit alarming right now, okay? Yeah, to say, this, to say the least, right? U.S. Consumer Price Index month over month change. And here's what I'm talking about. It's a great example, okay? So if you're watching Tiger TV, remember this one, okay, folks? And if you're not watching Tiger TV, maybe you're just listening to the audio, you can always go back to our YouTube channel, watch the archives, everything we do is archived. We were comping out against December, okay? Now check out, December was actually one of the toughest months. We had only an increase of 0.1%. So on a yearly basis, you're comping out. But keep in mind, look at that January and February numbers, okay? The yearly number is gonna be helped out immensely by the fact that, folks, we could just stay where we are right now, right? And you'll be comping out in two months against prices that are 0.9% higher. I was gonna say 1% because it might as well, right? You round up, why not? But think about that. If prices just stay where they are right now for 60 days, and they're not going to, okay, they're going up 0.3%. But it's important to understand because, you know, you guys and girls out there, you're, you're living the market. If you're listening to TFNN, man, you're educating yourselves, right? You're getting a lot of good information. You're, you're, you're trying to uh, figure out the markets the best you can, but not many people in the markets even would understand what you have coming down the line on a yearly basis. Now, the monthly one's a problem, man, and that's what the market's gonna look at a bit, but the market is no fool, and the market is gonna know that we have these comps. And check it out, you get it in April as well. So what do we got? You add up the next four months, man, and we have 1.4 percentage points of increase in the next four months alone. So the yearly number over the next 120 days is gonna be helped out to the tune of 1.4 percentage points higher is what you're gonna be comping against once we get that April number. Remember that, man. And I know I keep saying it, but boy, we're talking about what? We're talking about potentially May cuts right now. We're talking about potentially June cuts right now. Let's see their meeting schedule. So we have the March 20th meeting was the one that was in focus, okay? After that, May 1st is the date, and then you get June 11th and 12th. So, you know, by that June meeting, right, you're going to be getting, I believe, probably the, the April data. And the April data is probably going to be a decent yearly number unless things really accelerate. Because if you're talking about numbers that are still approaching 4% right now, if we're hitting 4% by the time we get the April CPI numbers in May, that means that over the next 120 days, we're going to have to see prices rise 1.4% to keep just where the yearly number is right now. Could it happen? Of course it could, because we're going up, what, 0.3% right now. That would be a 1.2% rise. But you see how that happens. Even if we go up 0.3% every month for the next four months, the yearly number is actually going to go down. What? Yes. Now, that's not going to help the Fed, but it's important to understand that when you see these yearly numbers, it's important to understand what we're comping against on the yearly. But boy, that monthly... It's its own deal. But guess what? We got tech stocks higher. NASDAQ 100. We're in the green. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. The market catching a bid. You got to love this market, man. We got the opening bell in 12 minutes right now, but you got the S&P is just negative by one point. NASDAQ 100 gets into positive territory by 14 points on a little bit of a hot CPI number to talk about some of the action going on. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV from the Schwab Network Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the outstanding team at the Schwab Network. They're usually talking three different hypothetical trades, but I think we'll be talking some uh, economic news this morning as well. Kevin Hinks, a little bit of a hot number this morning. What do you think of that CPI and the market reaction? Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, a little bit of a hot number. The market, fairly muted response, actually, from the market. I expected a little bit stronger of a thrust so it looks like you know this macroeconomic data is meeting the microeconomic maybe inflows into funds but they're certainly buying dips tommy and we'll see how this plays out it's going to be kind of interesting but in terms of the data warm warm to hot across the board headline up 0.3 versus up 0.1 a month ago that's a tenth higher than expected, two-tenths higher than than last month. Year over year, 3.4%. That's three-tenths higher than last month, Tommy. Excluding energy, that came in a tenth higher than expected, flat to last month. But core, year over year, was down a tenth to 3.9%. So that's higher than expected, 38 but lower than last month. So I think that when you break it down to in, in the different categories, things that jumped out at me, new vehicles up 0.3, used cars and trucks up 0.5%. So food at home was up a tenth, food away up three tenths, energy up 0.4. I mean, Tommy, this was a modestly strong number across the board. Now, the dollar is rallying because it appears that the U.S. economy is much stronger than the eurozone. And if we have to be more hawkish, that's going to make the U.S. dollar rally. Yields, boy, a very muted response from yields. They're higher, 4.04, but not. I thought they, they'd be up much stronger because, Tommy, this is a modestly higher number than expected. But so was wages. Right. That's two of the four uh, inflation indicators that we get in a month 
they were both stronger than expected. Wages were higher. So there's a narrative forming here that the Fed members, when they speak, are going to have to talk about, Tommy, and that is firming or reigniting inflation. Yeah, and I can't wait to see how they break that down. Chairman Powell this morning, I wonder how he's enjoying that morning coffee. A little bit of tough economic data on the inflation front. Uh, but boy, you talk about the economy, man. The economy is just roaring. If we get inflation under control, seems like it might be a little sticky in that 3.5 to 4% number. Um, but we're going to find out. A lot of speculation, Kevin. It was on the March meeting, potentially, March 20th. We may get the cut. That's my birthday. It seems like that might not happen right now. Um, are you trying to figure out when they might make that first cut, Kevin, or do we have enough data? As a trader yourself, you know, how, how are you looking right now when we get this economic, and I agree, man, it's like, you know, if you told everybody last night at the close, hey, you wanna go short the NASDAQ 100? Here's the data we're gonna get this morning, and I look at the futures on the Thinkorswim platform right now, and they're positive, so pretty astounding. But are you trying to figure out where the Fed is going to be, Kevin, what month they might come with that? How are you kind of approaching this volatile time when the market's trying to get ahead of the Fed and we have data that's a little bit tough to interpret? Are you trying to figure that one out? I know you like to say stay recent, I believe, um, is, your, is your phrase. But how are you approaching that when it's such a variable out there and everyone's trying to figure it out? The million-dollar question. Yeah, looking too far ahead. Looking too far ahead in this market is a fool there. Tommy, trying to think how uh, the market thinks that the Fed is going to have to cut six times. I think that's dead wrong, unless there's some event that causes the Fed to dramatically lower rates. Can't rule out that. We learned this week some things are on the calendar, some things aren't on the calendar, and you always have to be ready for both. So I say there's a low probability that the Fed cuts that many times. It's not zero. But it's also not 100. So I think the probabilities are that the Fed will cut later. I think the March rate cut will burn off in terms of the percentages as long as the data keeps coming in like this, Tommy, and subject to change without notice if the data starts to turn. Always subject to change without notice, as we know. Uh, and with that, we got the S&P futures rolling over to positive territory as well. Absolutely remarkable. And we got the opening bell coming up in six minutes. Hey, I wanted to get your take on Tesla. Always a fan favorite, man. Uh, Elon always in the press, but it comes out hurts. They're selling 20,000 Tesla vehicles, man. If you're in the market for a used Tesla, probably a great time as those prices are going to be tough. We got Tesla rolling over a little bit. They're down about two bucks today. Um, do you find yourself looking at Tesla? What do you think in general? There's so many variables in play right now with Tesla, uh, but boy, that's a tough one on the EV front. You got Hertz that was a big pioneer. They exploded on that news originally with Tesla, and now they're selling 20,000 vehicles, man, as people just not interested in what they're pushing. Well, if you're coming into a town that you're not familiar with, I think the probabilities that you're going to want an EV are very low, just from yeah. a... A, a comfort a comfort capacity, Tommy. So, yeah, I think this is a uh, Hertz that got way ahead of themselves in terms of anticipating demand for EVs, bringing their personal supply and demand back into more balance, selling 20,000 cars, about 80% 80, 80 of, their, of their EVs are Teslas. So most of those will be Teslas, and they're going to use the proceeds to do what? Buy more internal combustion cars, Tommy. Wild. Get that supply and demand back in line. So taking yeah. a write-off for that, you know, they, they talked about weak demand, but they also talked about something interesting. High damage costs, collision and damage costs are higher in the EVs than they are in the ICEs. So, yeah, really interesting story, but not really surprising. The news flow is starting to turn for a more moderate view of EVs, not just a gold rush. It's a great take, man. And, you know, I've rented a car from Hertz myself, and some of my buddies were joking that if I showed up that day, um, nine out of ten times, they're going to try and shove me into an EV vehicle because that's all they got left on the lot. And pretty interesting. That was like two or three months ago, right? So kind of the writing's on the wall. And I agree, man. We were going to the Great Smoky Mountains, and I was renting an SUV. The last thing I wanted, man, for an 11-hour trip was an EV vehicle where I can't stop and fill it up at a gas station. Uh, nonetheless, no, it comes you. to fruition. No, thank you. <laughs> Not just yet, man. Uh, with that in yeah. mind, Kevin... You guys got some equities you're talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Great show today with the start of earnings season. Tomorrow morning we'll look at J.P. Morgan. Like Foley will do a presentation on Delta Airlines as we get them tomorrow morning. And then Citigroup, probably the nice. most beat up 
of some of the financials. So three really good names today, Tommy. Kevin, I appreciate the time. The mornings don't get much busier than CPI breaking out a little hot, but I appreciate you taking the nine minutes with us and our listeners, man. We always appreciate it. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, Kevin, and we'll talk to you next Tuesday, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks, 12 o'clock today on Fast Market. Banks kick it off tomorrow morning. They're talking JP Morgan. They're talking City. They're talking Delta with their earnings as well. How about that chart of JP Morgan, man, right? Jamie Dimon. Whew, he's getting it done. Um, and yeah, compare that to some of the other banks, right? Like City, Kevin was talking about, trading at 53 bucks. Just going back three years, I got it at 80. Bank of America, sitting at $33. You go back a couple years, we're at 50. Versus JP Morgan, man. 171, basically at our recent highs. We're coming back for the open, folks. And guess what? We got the S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow in positive territory. It's going to be an interesting one. Don't go away. We'll be right TFNN back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well. So it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And you talk about a resilient market. Pay attention, man, because if this can't hold that market down, I mean, maybe it's looking forward to the next few months like I've been talking about on the comp basis. You get into January, February, March, April. You're dealing with much friendlier comps on a yearly basis for those CPI numbers. Uh, but nonetheless, we get the S&P up by nine points. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 60. Back above 17,000. You get the Dow up by 65 right now. The Russell. 
the Russell yesterday and the Tiger's Den, folks. Uh, boy, that Russell, you talk about volatility. Russell, negative by half a percent. Bitcoin. We do get that Bitcoin ETF approval. And where do we get to? We get to 48,000, man. Absolutely remarkable how that all comes down. Uh, you get that approval after the market yesterday. And it is interesting. Some of my friends that aren't in the market, that's not their profession, right? In the group chat last night saying, how does that happen the day after the SEC account gets hacked? Well, the reason why it happened is because they knew that they had to respond by January 10th. I was talking about yesterday. They had to respond to at least one of those Bitcoin ETF proposals, um, applications by yesterday, which is what made the Tuesday tweet so remarkable as you knew it was coming down the line. Market expectations were that there was going to get approved, and it may have been the exact tweet. I mean, they could have had that tweet lined up, ready to push out on their Twitter account, and somebody logged in there and maybe just hit the send a button. I mean, it seems so perfectly written. Uh, nonetheless, we got Bitcoin trading up 1400 bucks Now, be careful, folks. There is a lot of optimism in Bitcoin. Don't have to tell you if you're watching this thing. You just traded from 27000 to 47000 over the period of just three months on the acceleration that you might have that ETF coming down the line. Now, what's so cool is, okay, this is when futures got approved. Remember when futures got approved? My goodness, I cannot believe that. 2017. Unbelievable, man. Do you remember when futures got approved? I remember when futures got approved. Uh, seemed like the sh easiest short in the world. You could short Bitcoin in a regulated exchange and you traded, okay, now you got all this exuberance up to that price point at that time, 20,000 in 2017, right? And what happened? Over the next year, once you were allowed to trade futures, you traded from 20,000 to 3,000. Now, yeah, that was a heck of a buy, okay? But be careful, because we have a little bit of similar action going on. We've seen an acceleration over the last year from 16,000. We've tripled in price to 48,000. And now the ETF is open. So be careful. We got a lot of optimism in there. As you got markets rolling over a bit, we got the S&Ps up by one, NASDAQ 100 up by 36, Dow rolls over to negative territory. And let's jump around to some of the banks, man, as Kevin mentioned. So JP Morgan, we kick things off down half a percent. They'll be out with their numbers tomorrow. We got Bank of America down almost a full percent. We get Citi down 1.9% to kick off the trading session. Wells Fargo, the other big bank out tomorrow, down by four tenths percent. We get Delta. They'll be covering Delta on Fast Market with our man Kevin today at 12. Delta down about two-tenths percent to kick things off. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla down 2%. And let's put this thing because it is interesting how this – I mean, you got to love channel lines, man. Our man Bud Rolfs, love you, Bud, miss you. I mean, this channel line, folks, it's just been testing, 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 testing. You break away at 265, and just like that, we're $35 lower over the last few weeks. We're trading at 229 right now. I think Tesla's probably gone up for 200, man. And yeah, if you are in the market for a used Tesla, you're probably going to get some pretty affordable prices, man. I found myself this morning thinking when I heard that headline. First of all, listen to yourself as a consumer, folks. This happens often, okay? And Kevin laid it out well. I'm totally open to an electric vehicle purchasing it. Completely 1 million percent open to it, okay? The next car I buy, it might be an electric vehicle. But when you're talking about traveling to an area you don't know, whew, yeah, that blows quite a hole in that whole strategy. Because the last thing I wanted, especially having a family, is you got an electric vehicle that you can't figure out where to fill up. And that's the problem with that whole thing. And I'm sure Hertz is seeing it. And we literally, my friends and I, talking about the only thing that they're gonna have left. So when I made that trip to the Great Smoky Mountains a couple months ago with the family, I had rented a car from Hertz. And I rented a big SUV, a three row SUV, something like, it's one of the biggest they have. It's something similar to, it's supposed to be a um, Yukon, GMC Yukon or something similar. I ended up with a Ford Ex uh, Expedition Max. Great vehicle if you're in the market. Huge SUV, beautiful on the inside. We loved it. Three big rows, um, plenty of room for storage, all that stuff. So I reserved that vehicle, and it's such a unique vehicle, right, that I was worried. It's not like I, I reserved a midsize sedan, okay? You reserve a midsize sedan, they're probably going to be able to find something in the realm of a midsize sedan. Maybe they got to go to their Hertz, you know, one town away and go pick it up. Maybe they got to go this and that and go pick it up. But it's not like they have endless amounts of GMC Yukons or um, 
Ford Expedition Maxes, right? So I call the place. I'm like, listen, I'm coming. It's important. We got a family trip. I'm leaving that day. We're driving 12 hours, man. I'm hoping you have it. Bottom line is they got it done. I called the day before. If you're doing this, folks, okay, call the actual rental offices. Make sure you check in with them. Make sure you tell them that you're coming. Make sure they expect it. The day before, they can probably make sure they line that vehicle up for you, especially if it's like a special vehicle like that. Now, the kicker is, though, is that my friends were joking Man, you're going to show up, and all they're going to have is EVs on the lot. And guess what? They're they're right. That's what's been happening. And uh, Hertz is going to dump those electric vehicles. Now, to Hertz's credit, they're down 4% right now. Absolutely brilliant in terms of how they rode the acceleration of euphoria for EVs, Tesla. They got Tom Brady on there, right? They get the GOAT pushing EV. I mean, it was just a marketing genius platform, except for the fact that in reality, it wasn't going to play well. Nobody cared if Tom Brady was pushing EVs on their commercials because, like Kevin said, man, you know, renting a car, it seemed like it was a plausible deal where people might want to try out Teslas and that would be the way to do it. Things have changed a lot since then with Elon as well. He's become quite a complicated character. He already was, but things a little bit more complicated for the brand. Uh, nonetheless, that partnership over and uh, people are going to think twice the next time that they try and do something like that on the rental front as people just not willing quite yet, it would make sense to rent a vehicle because where, you know, there's just not enough knowledge of where you fill those up, fill it up, where you charge, etc. Okay. Yeah, you got geopolitical stuff going all over the place, man. Uh, so this headline was out early this morning. It's flashing again on CNBC that Iran seizes an oil tanker involved in the U.S. dispute off the coast of Oman. It's like, it just doesn't stop, man. Um, an unnamed tanker was boarded by armed individuals near the Gulf of Oman and appeared to change course toward Iranian waters. You know, Iran, always in the press uh, right now and not for very good reasons as things just continue to ratchet up. And we got yields right now. 4.02. Quite the reverberation, man. You got the NASDAQ. Up 83 points. The Dow makes it into positive territory right now. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon. Can't hold Amazon down right now. Up 2%. Right? These are just mammoth numbers. Apple, down one-tenth percent right now. You got Microsoft, up 1.6% right now. You jump over to Meta shares. They're down a bit off of three-tenths percent. NVIDIA shares, they're up by 1.5%. That's an all-time high to 553.46 for NVIDIA on the open. Absolutely remarkable, man. We jump over to Netflix shares. Look at this, Netflix, $500, up by 4.5%. This market's on fire, man. Stay tuned, folks. We got a couple more segments. We got a lot to go over still. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Markets roll over a bit. You're going to see some volatility today, man, as this market digests these numbers, basically pushing almost all-time highs. We're sitting with the S&Ps up by four points right now. You see the acceleration down to a low of 4,806.50. Now, you got a flash low on that 830 number of 4,802.50. These are five-minute bars, though. You got down to that low at 9 o'clock on the dot. We've risen since then. But just in the last five minutes or so, you've traded down almost 10 points on the S&Ps. Uh, we touched that high. We pretty much touched right where you came into that number at 8.30, and we backed off a bit to 48.23, still positive by three points, as I mentioned, on the S&P. All right, we continue talking a little Fed. So this story out last night, but in focus, of course, when you talk about the Fed, you talk about where rates are right now. And let's just check. Where are we sitting? We're still sitting at about 4.02. Yeah, we'll call it 4.03 right now, the yield on the 10-year. And this is Feds Williams says rates are high enough to cool inflation to goal. Well, I think it's the most obvious statement I've ever seen right now. OK, now, yeah, you know, it's it's nice to hear that and to reiterate what we're all thinking. But you have the Federal Reserve Bank of New York President John Williams said monetary policy is now tight enough to guide inflation back to the Fed's target, but suggested policymakers need more evidence of cooling inflation before cutting interest rates. Um, very obvious statement, in my opinion. OK, we're at five and a half percent right now in terms of the restrictive rate policy. Inflation is not near five and a half percent. OK, so, yes, it is definitely tight enough where we are right now, where inflation is right now. What are we getting? We're getting numbers at about four percent right now. Right. <clears throat> and this was he spoke yesterday, I believe, Wednesday. Yeah, said uh, Wednesday in White Plains, New York. My base case is that the current restrictive stance of monetary policy will continue to restore balance and bring inflation back to our 2% longer run goal. Here's the kicker. That's true. Everybody knows that's true. OK, that's the base case. But the kicker is he should say dot, dot, dot. But we have to make sure we don't keep it there for too long because we know it will bring back inflation to 2%, but the problem is if we keep it there too long, it will restrict the economy and it will cause weakness and potentially job losses and full employment is our other mandate. So we have to be careful because we know where we are right now is gonna bring back inflation to 2%, but what we're trying to do is bring it back to 2% without hurting the economy, or I should say with um, weakening the economy as little as possible. So a lot of obvious statements there. Uh, I expect that we will need to maintain a restrictive stance of policy for some time. Probably not getting a March cut. Right. I mean, that's that's only 70 days away to fully achieve our goals. And it will only be appropriate to dial back the degree of policy restraint when we are confident that inflation is moving toward two percent on a sustained basis. Now, I don't think this report gets us there. But I do think that over the next couple of months, like I talked about, it's going to be especially interesting on a yearly basis. Folks, pay attention. 
I've, I've gone over it well, man, and it's great to see in terms of how it breaks out, okay? But pay attention to where we get those numbers in terms of the next four months because January of 2023, we had quite a rise in CPI. You had a rise in February as well. If you're still dealing with yearly comps approaching 4% when you're going against those big numbers in the January and February comps, then yeah, you might be pushing those cuts out a little bit further than the market may be thinking right now, to put it lightly. All right, we talked about Bitcoin, but there's your headline. Bitcoin volume jumps as US spot ETFs tied to token begin trading. Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust ETF kicks off pre-market activity out there. And yeah, it's gonna be the wild, wild west, to put it lightly, man. Already the wild, wild west. Um, but you got Coinbase, you got Robinhood trading higher. Let's see, let's check it out. Coinbase, they're up by 5.5%. There's an acceleration for you last night, man. Robinhood's up by about 2%. And you jump back to Bitcoin. Whoo, watch out, baby. 49,270, we're gonna hit 50,000. That's a nice round number for you. Seems like that uh, might be the case. All right, we jump over to quite the article over here. This is kind of the big read this morning out on Bloomberg talking about the Zuckster. Uh, how AI replaced the metaverse as Zuckerberg's top priority. Uh, deeply engaged in his company's AI efforts ahead of its 20th anniversary. Absolutely remarkable, man. I remember when I was on MySpace, finally pulled up a Facebook page. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to say that. Um, but his close attention hasn't always proved to be a recipe for success. Yeah, the company's now called Meta. Maybe they'll shift that to some AI name. Um, but nonetheless, this article talks about, and I'll post this in the Tiger's Den because it's a good long read. Um, Meta has lost about $50 billion in its effort. And that's talking about the metaverse. Yeah. Um, named it Meta in 2021. $50 billion. Now, that money is going somewhere. Okay. Um, but yeah, not turning any dividends just yet yeah 20 20th anniversary man look at they go through the breakdown uh i'll post this in the tigers down nonetheless he's trying to pivot he's trying to go where the market is going and uh yeah ai is where the market's going right now as the metaverse is probably a few years out to put it lightly all right here we go we got the S&Ps, man. That is a drop. We touched the area we opened at, and we roll over. S&Ps off by five. NASDAQ off by, uh, excuse me, just up by 10 right now. We got the Dow negative by 71. We jump over to Boeing shares. They've been in the press this week for not so good reasons, and they're down again today, off by 1.2%. You're almost pushing the lows. We've talked about Boeing. Seems like uh, 220 is where this thing is going, man. It's going to test that 220 area, and you may even come back and test yeah, the 210 area. The bottom of that weekly bar from June, July 24th, when they had earnings uh, about six months ago, seems like you're coming down that area. We we're going to at least test that 220 area. Tough to find a bid in Boeing right now. Tough to find a bid in this market. Let's see how some of those stocks are rolling over, man. Yeah, Amazon was up by 2%. They're up by 1.3% now. They get a little bit of a rollover. Microsoft was higher. They roll over as well, man. Microsoft just gave up four bucks. Watch out in this market, man. Let's see how yields are doing right now. You got the 10-year reverberating yet again. We got the 10-year right now. 4.035, the yield on the 10-year. And let's check out the dollar index. DXY, 102.56. Kevin put it well, man. You know, it's going to be interesting to see where yields go, number one. But no matter where yields go, the strength of the U.S. economy, man, on the heels of the pandemic on the heels of inflation persistent across the globe. Dollar strength coming at you, 102.57 right now. Dollar higher as we have yields rising a bit and we got the market rolling over to negative territory as the S&Ps are off by seven. We jump over to the VIX. Volatility index, 12.62. Volatility just sucked out of this market right now, man. Um, absolutely remarkable. When you look at a 12 handle with everything going on, the volatility that we're getting, and no, we got uh, very little volatility priced into this market. It's a hot number, folks. But keep in context the moves we've had in this market recently. And all we're doing, I think, is we're pushing things back a little bit. You know, the market probably got ahead of itself in March. Q2 
Kevin laid out his opinion well at the beginning of the program when we talked to him at 9.15 saying, you know, six cuts. He's not a fan of six cuts. I think it's going to be very difficult myself for the market to get the six cuts they're thinking about, especially as we get this data down the line. But guess what? They're probably coming. And we probably need to wait another three or four months. Maybe we need to wait for them, some of those comps to be a little bit friendlier. But if we get the 0.3% monthly number, man, it doesn't matter what those comps are. If we're rising 0.3% as inflation, it's a little sticky and we got markets in negative territory. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got volatility, sometimes a trader's best friend. And when we got volatility with a VIX at 1260, right? Boy, that better be uh, a scenario that could be a trader's best friend, man. As volatility premium, very low. And we have the market whips on a bit as we are 24 minutes into the trading day. You got the S&Ps negative by eight. NASDAQ barely in the positive, as we've shown some of those fag stocks in the positive, right? You got Amazon shares. Ooh, they give it back, though. Be careful here. Look at that. NASDAQ almost rolling over to negative prices. The Dow right now off 92. Russell off by 14. Amazon was up by 2%. They give back most of that. They're off by 8 tenths percent. Microsoft shares, they just gave up $4 from their high. Still up by 1%, though, from Microsoft. NVIDIA shares up by 7 tenths percent. We jump over to Tesla on the heels that Hertz is selling. 20,000 vehicles, a lot of them are going to be Teslas. Tesla down by 
2 percent, we'll call it today. And we jump back to some of the numbers as a bit of a wrap up. So here's the, the headline numbers that you get. CPI this morning on a monthly basis, 0.3 percent. They were looking for 0.2. Core CPI, 0.3 percent, basically what they're looking for year over year, 3.4. 3.2 is the estimate, and core CPI 3.9. They were looking for 3.8, so they come in a little bit hot. What else we got? We got jobless claims, 202,000. This market's on fire, man. We almost got a one handle for the jobless claims as the, um, the economy just, just continuing to be remarkably strong. And we finish up the show with a little bit of a sad note. Pour one out for our man, Bill Belichick, as he has done in New England. Uh, quite a rain. Six Super Bowl rings, man. You, you often don't realize how good you have it when it's going on, folks, until it's gone. That's the case in many things in life. Uh, quite the 20-year run the Patriots have had. Six Super Bowl rings and uh, 71 years old. Yeah, so he's done. He's done in New England. We'll see where he goes. A lot of speculation, of course, with where he may end up. Um, but been a, a tough go around since Brady came down to Tampa and then expired. But you're talking about 2002, 2004, 2005. You take a 10-year break, and then you make a run again, 2015, 17, and 19. Remarkable you had a 10-year break in there. You want to hear an interesting stat, folks? Wow, Microsoft just topped Apple as the most valuable public company. Can't believe that. Look at that. Microsoft. Are you kidding me? Creeping up. Microsoft, the biggest company in the world. Folks, Basil's coming up next. Thanks so much for starting your trading day right here. Stay tuned for Basil. Have a great one, folks.